This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Boisai. Very interesting topic this morning. Um, the topic is uh, regarding Parshas B'Shalach. We find uh, the first instance of uh, women praying, of uh, Miriam, Batan Lohem Miriam. Miriam answered, Miriam responded with the Shira. So it's always a good week, a good parsha to speak about women davening, women's obligation in tefillah. Last year we had a share about whether women are allowed to say Kaddish. So uh, today in general, we're going to speak about the obligation of women in tefillah. So in the Rabbi say, if you look at the top of your sheets, it says, Be'inyan Chiyuv, you could fill in, Noshim B'Tefillah. Well, you know, I gave you a job to do also, okay? Be'inyan Chiyuv, Noshim B'Tefillah. Um, and we're going to talk about in general the obligation of women in davening. By the way, if anybody ever misses a shear, if anybody wants to have the Mar Makoimois uh, email to them, whether from this year or Wednesday or Friday, um, you could email Rabbi Gladstein source sheets dot com or um, see me. I have a friend in Muncie, Rabbi Aaron Subar, who mans the site. So if anybody wants the Mar Makoimois at any time, uh, let us know. Okay. So the mission says like this: Noshim Ba'avodim. Uketanim, Paturim, Mikriyashma. Women, servants, minors are exempt from Kriyashma, Uminat Tfilin, and they're exempt from wearing Tfilin. But Vichayovin Bitfila, women are obligated in davening, Uva Mezuzah, they're obligated to put a Mezuzah on their doors, Uva Birchas Hamazain, women are obligated to bench. Now the question is, why are women Chayiv in Tfila? So really it depends on the Girsa and the Gemara. Our girls and the, the Gemara is the Chayav and Betfila. They're Chayav and Tfila. We would have said women should be Pater from Tfila. Why? It's Mitzvah Sasei Shazman Grama. There's nothing governed more by time than uh, Tfila. You can't daven too early. You can't daven too late. It's only a certain amount of time. Shachas Min Chamarav. They're all governed by time. We would have said women should be exempt from Tfila. Says the Gemara of Chayav and Betfila. Derachameinenu, because Tfila is a way to invoke God's mercy. And women also need rachamim. Since women need rachamim, women are chayiv in tefillah. That is our girsa in the Gemara Brachos, Chaf Vav Amud Beis. You look at the riff, and this is on Daf Yud Aleph Amud Beis, going on to Yud Beis Amud Aleph, the Daf Eharif. The riff seems to have had a different girsa in the Gemara. The riff says, Kriya Shema Utfilin. Why are women exempt? To have le mitzvah sasei shazman grama, v'cham mitzvah sasei shazman grama, noshim peturais. However, Tfila u mezuza u berchas hamazain. The havale mitzvah sasei shaloi hazman grama. Says the riff. You know why women are chayiv in tfila? Because it's a mitzvah sasei shaloi hazman grama. Bechal mitzvah sasei shaloi hazman grama. Nashim chayavais. So what's the riff talking about? Tfila shaloi hazman grama? Sounds good. Yeah, I'll buy that. The Shlaisman Grama? So what, you could have in Shachar at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Right? Unfortunately, some people say, you know, may not answer that question correctly. But, Mitzvah, what? Tfila is Mitzvah Shlaisman Of course not. We know you, you can't dive in after this man, Tfila. You're not your say Tfila Bismana. Any Tfila, every Tfila has, is governed by Ismanim. Shachar, you can't dive in before Alois, but the Evan. Right? You can't daven after this man, tefillah. You're not Yotzeh tefillah b'zmana. And yet, says the riff, and apparently this is the riff's gersa in the Gemara, that the reason why women are chayv and tefillah, not because of what our gersa says, that tefillah is racha meinenu. The riff apparently had the gersa, that women are chayv and tefillah, because tefillah is not governed by time. For age. For anybody. For it's not governed by time. <laughs> so Rabbi Yisai, this brings us, and from these two gersais emerge... One of the most well-known machloikas we shine him. The famous machloikas between the Rambam and the Ramban. Okay? And Rabbi, if you came here today just to learn one thing, it's Rambam, not Rambam. If you say Rambam, you're advertising your, uh, your uh, Amaratzos. It's a Milel, Rambam, Rambam. And the Ramban is Ramban, Mora. The Rambam, you emphasize the first part of the word, Rambam. The Ramban, you emphasize the second, Ramban. Why? We got we to gotta distinguish the two. You know, you want to make people think that you learned in yeshiva for many years, so at least <laughs> the least you could do is, you say Rambam, you know, all of us. Rambam is, is Maimonides, Ramban is Nachmanides. Okay, fine. That brings us to the famous Machlokes, the Rambam and Hilchos Tefillah. 
Parak Aleph, Halacha Aleph and Beis, Rambam says like this, Mitzvah sasei l'svalo b'chol yoyim. There's a positive commandment to daven every day, Shinemar, Fa'avadatem as Hashem lekechem. You should serve Hashem your God. What should you serve Him? Peanut butter and jelly. Well, what, 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 how do you serve Hashem? The answer is, says the Rambam, that Pasuk is referring to tefillah. Lehispalel b'chol yoyim. Lehispalel b'chol yoyim. Our tradition is This service is davening. How do I know is tfila? Because elsewhere it says What service is the service of the heart? Zu tfila. So says the Ramam. There's a mitzvah asay do eraisa to daven. How often? Every day. Medairai, so you got to daven every day. Ve'en minyan ha tefilas minatayra. Biblically, there's no ordained number of tefilas you have to say every day. Ve'en mishnah ha tefilas hazais minatayra. The format, the form of the tefilah, the matbeah of the tefilah is not biblical. You could say whatever you want. Ve'en le tefilas man kavua minatayra. And you could daven whenever you want. The Rambam learns medairai, so you have to daven every day. When? Doesn't matter. What? It doesn't matter. How? It doesn't matter. Just daven every day. Once a day. You put on tefillin once a day, you have to daven once a day. Say, so And we're going to see, look what the Ramam says. What's the source for that, Rebbe? Serve Hashem your God. How do you serve Him? What do you give Him? You offer Him tefillah. Says the Ramam, Because I hold, there's a mitzvah da'iraisa to daven every day. And the time of the tefillah is not legislated, Medairaisa. And the form of. Since tefillah is ain hazman grama, Medairaisa, there's no zman. Women and avadim are chayav and tefillah lafishi mitzvah asay shaloi hazman grama. This is a very big chiddush. The Ramam learns that since tefillah is shaloi hazman grama, women must daven every day. Now we're going to see, how does the Rambam know every day? Maybe you only have to daven once a month, once a year, once a Shemitah, right? Yeah. Some people hold like that. Yoga. No. <laughs> <laughs> right? But how does the Rambam know that you have to daven once a day? But the Rambam says, no, the Torah says to daven, it doesn't say how, when, what. I understand that means once a day, and therefore women are chayev. Now, what, how do you daven? What is, how do you meet the baseline requirement of Tula, says the Rambam? The obligation of this mitzvah is like this. That a person beseeches and davens every day. First he declares God's praise. And then he asks for his needs. That he, uh, he, uh, that he needs, he asks it in a, a manner of request, uvetchina, and with supplication, and then the person blesses and praises Hashem, for the bounty that, ha- that Hashem has given you, each person according to his ability. So according to the Rambam, you wake up in the morning, you say, that's a shvach, right? You're singing the mass of the world. Help me get my kid out of bed today. Right? Thank you for helping me get him out of bed yesterday. You ribbon say the mitzvah the iraisa of tefillah. Ribbon I'm turning on the faucet. Please let the hot water work today. Right? You know. Thank you for making it work yesterday. That's it. You're yoytze. No psukah de zimra. No brachas kriyshema. No shemane esrei. No ashrei. No aleinu. Says the Rambam. All you need to do is once a day shevach bakasha haydaya. How long does it take? Five seconds. Midai That's the opinion of the Rambam. And the Rambam reiterates this in the Sefer HaMitzvah, it's a mitzvah, hey, that there is a mitzvah, Dai Raisa, to daven every single day. It's not governed by time. There's no format. There's no, there's no um, qualifications or specifications other than Shevach, Bakasha, Haidaya. Comes the Ramban. And the Ramban says, I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Now, Rabbi Isai, the Rambam apparently, what was his gersa in the Gemara? There, apparently the Rambam did not have our gersa in the Gemara. When our Gemara says why women are chayv and tefillah, there is no way the Rambam's gersa is why are women chayv and tefillah derachameinenu. 
The Rambam's girsa was the chayavim betfila like the riff. That why are women chayav in tefila? Because it's a mitzvah say she she'ein hazman grama. The Rambam apparently had the girsa the riff. The Ramban says no. The Ramban in his hasagos on the sefer on mitzvahs mitzvah hey he says ve'ein haskama bazeh. I don't agree. I don't agree with that. Shekvar biaru hachachamim begemara. Because the Chachamim have said unequivocally in the Gemara, Tfilah de Rabbana. That Tfilah is Midrabana. For men and for women. The, there's no Tfilah, there's no Mitzvah Tfilah from the Torah. From the Torah. No, the Ramban says you have to daven Midraisa and no. There is no biblical Mitzvah to daven. Now we would say, so the Ramban is coming to be lenient, right? The Rambam says Tfilah is Doraisa. The Rambam says there's a Pasuk in the Chumash, and the Ramban seems to be coming to be very lenient with us and saying, no, Tefillah is only Drabanon. But we're going to see it's the exact opposite. The fact that Tefillah is Drabanon is a tremendous Chumrah. It's a tremendous Chumrah, you will see. And it's going to make a very big difference whether you're an Ashkenazi or a Sephardi. Whether you follow the Rambam or you follow the Ramban. It's going to make the biggest difference in the world in terms of what women have to daven. <coughs> okay? Says Ramban, first of all, I don't agree. I hold Tfilos de Rabbana. Number two, according to the Rambam, that Tfilos de Raisa, where did the Rambam get Tfilos once a day? Where does the Torah say, do it once a day? Either, maybe you should do it every second. Maybe you should do it every hour. Maybe you should do it seven times a day. Maybe you should do it once a week. Where do we get this concept that Tfilos once a day? Look, the, he says, He says, Maybe you only have to daven once your whole life. Right? How, how often do you have to write a Sefer Torah? This is a mitzvah of Ksiva Sefer Torah. Do you have to write a Sefer Torah every day? The mitzvah is once in your life to write a Sefer Torah. The rush says you can be Mekam the mitzvah by buying Svarim. Fine. So maybe Tefillah also. You ask the guy, you know, he comes in, Neila. He says, When am I going to see you next? He says, What do you mean? I hold like the Rambam. You only have to daven once your whole life. Right? Well, I mean, where did... Well, the Rambam holds you have to daven every day, but where is he getting it from? Maybe it's once a year, maybe it's once your whole life. Says Ramban, no. Tfila is the Rabbanon. Says Ramban. And if you want to say that Tfila is Daraisa, then we can make the case that Tfila would only be Midaraisa in the following scenario. If a person has a particular tsara, particular situation particular need person is in a time of distress in that case says Ramban I would agree to the Rambam that tefillah is doi raisa. by the way the Rav Moshe Feinstein has a tshuva that according to this Ramban that tefillah be'ez tzara is doi raisa, it could be Goyim would also be obligated to daven be'ez tzara also ok but be it as it may we have a major machlekes over here Rambam says tefillah is doi raisa. Midday Raisa, there is no such thing as Man Tfila. You're Mekayim the Mitzvah Day Raisa with Shevach, with Bakasha, and with Haidaya. And since it's Ainaz Man Grama, are women Chayiv? You bet. But once a day. How much do they have to daven? Do they have to daven a long Shman Essay, a Shmur Shman Essay? They don't have to daven Shman Essay at all, according to the Rambam. Midday Raisa, they're Yoytse, what? With um, Shevach. Bakasha and Hadaya. The Ramban disagrees. The Ramban holds Tfilos Drabanon. Why is Tfilos Drabanon? Because that's what the Gemara says. The Ramban apparently had our Gersa in the Gemara. What's our Gersa in the Gemara? Chayovin betfila diracha meinenu. Tfilos is Rachmanos. So if I were to ask you the following question Do women have to dab in Mincha? What would you answer? According to the Rambam, no. To Machlokes Rishonim, the Rambam who says Tefillah is a mitzvah sasei she'ein has man grama, and therefore all you have to do is daven once a day, and that's why are women chayiv? Women are chayiv because there is an unspecified time to daven every day. Women would only have to daven once a day. They don't have to daven shachris. They don't have to daven mincha. Just once a day, they could say alei kai neshama or birchas hatayra. Finished. Finished. That's the shita of the Rambam. The Ramban would say, do women have to daven mincha? 100% women have to daven mincha. They're mechuyiv, midrabanon, to daven shachris, to daven mincha. What about mariv? No. 
But what do you mean? But men have to daven Marav. Marav is also Racham, Rachmanus. No. Really, Marav is a Rishus. But men accepted it as a Chiyuv. Women never accepted it as a Chiyuv. So we have a major Machloikis right now. You're going to go home today. You're going to find out whether you could tell your wife, you don't have to daven at all. Just daven for one minute. Or you have to tell her, daven Shachar Semincha. And you know what the answer is going to be? Yes, it depends if you're uh, Ashkenazi or a Svaradi. Oh. It's a major difference. And the Svardim really have it easy over here. Says the Magen Avram. Oh, let's see. What is the Shulchan Aruch Paskin like? Noshim va'avadim. Women and servants. Afal pi shepatur mi kriya shema. Even though they're exempt from shema. Why are they exempt from shema? Because it's a mitzvah sasei shazman. Grama. Chayovim betfila mipnei shehi. Mitzvah sasei shaloi hazman grama. Who is the Shulchan Aruch Paskin like? The Rambam, like as usual. The Shulchan Aruch, Maran Bet Yosef, he's paskining like the Rambam, like the Rif, two out of three. And the Halacha is, Shulchan Aruch paskins, women are chayiv and tefillah because it's a mitzvah to say Shalai Azman Grama. Would they have to dive in Mincha? No. no. Would they have to dive in Shachris? No. They just have to do Shevach, Haidaya, a Shevach, Bakashan Adayim. Says the Magin Avram. Ken Kasav Harambam, this rule I did feel a mitzvah sasei day raisa he dechsev uli of day bechol of abchem ach meday raisa, but meday raisa day bepam echad beyom. It's enough to daven once a day uvechol nusach sheyirtze, and whatever nusach you want. Says Magen Avram v'lachin no agu roiv nashim, and that is why. It is the custom of most women, She'ein mispalalois betvidos. They don't daven on a regular basis. Why? Because they wake up in the morning, they wash Nagel Vasar, they say Lekain Yashama, or they say Berchas Atayra, and they are good to go for the rest of the day. Right? Mishum da Oimre Miyad Baboiker, they say immediately in the morning, Samach Lanatila, Eze Bakasha, they say, Yibani Shalaylam, please, please give me an easy time with my kids today. I made it until now, with your help. Help me continue. Finished. She's done. Umedai raisa dai bazeh. Umedai raisa, that's enough. Says the Magen Avram, it could be even midra banon, it's enough. Right? Ve'evshir shagam chachomim lo'ichivam yoyseh. Ve'haram ban soiver. But the, says the Magen Avram, despite the fact that most women are going like the Rambam, you should know the Ramban holds tefillah's dra banon. Ve'chein das roiv hapoy. That is the consensus of most Paiskim. Tefillah is Medjabanon. And if Tefillah is Drabanon because Tefillah is Rachamim, what do women have to daven every day? Shachris and Mincha. How do we Paskin? How do we Paskin? So you'll be surprised to learn. We're going to read in the Mishnah Bura one moment. The Mishnah Bura says, The Sfardim, the Shulchan Aruch is Paskin like the Rambam. But, Asa Ashkenazim, we don't pass them like the Rambam. We pass them like the Ramban and most Rishonim. And therefore, Halacha Lamaisa says the Chafetz Chaim, women are required to daven Shachris and Mincha every single day. That's the Psaq of the Mishnah Bura. That might come as a Chiddush, right? <laughs> right? Going to Shul? No, no. For, no, all they want, they just want to go to Shul. No, stay home, but daven Shachris and Mincha. There's no Chiv to daven with a minion or no Chiv to daven in Shul. But you do have a chiyav to daven mincha if you're an Ashkenazi. Doesn't have to be in a shul. Doesn't. No reason to go to shul. But the, what? Marav, because even men, technically, marav is a rishos. Marav is optional. But the Ramam says that we've accepted it upon ourselves. But women have not accepted marav upon themselves. Again, Svardim, they don't have to do mincha, they don't have to do shachras. They just, according to Magin Avram, they're yaitzu with a little bit. So let's take a look at the Shulchan Aruch inside. The, the Mishnah Baruch says the Mishnah Baruch in Simen Kuv Vav Sivkat and Dalit Shehi Mitzvah Sasei Kol Zeh Ledas HaRambam. This is all according to the Rambam Sherak Zmanei Hatfila Hemi Devei Sofer. The Rambam says Tfilos Not Rabbanon Tfilos Dei Raisa Zmanei Mar Rabbanon. Avalikur Mitzvah Tfilah Him Minat Torah Shenemr Lovder B'Chol Avavchem Ezu Avodah Shibalev Have Oimer Zut Tfilah. 
There's no official text. A woman can daven whatever nusach she wants. Ubechol eish shayirza when at whatever time she wants. Umisha hispalo pam echad bayoyim ay belayla yotza. And if you daven once or twice a day, you're yotze. Once in the day, once in the night, you're yotze. Yodei chavasa menatayra. Right. In other words, excuse me. If you daven either once a day or once at night, according to Ram, you're you're yotze. And then the Mishnah Berurah cites the Magen Avram. That based on this, most women do not daven consistently, shachris <coughs> and, and mincha, because they wake up in the morning, they say one tefillah. Says the Mishnah on the fourth line, Avodas haramban she'ikr mitzvah tefillah midivay soifrim. The ikr, the main mitzvah of, of davening is drabanan. Which drabanan? She'im an she'knesses hagdolo she'tikno yurches brachas ala seder lehispalo oisam shachris u mincha. Chayva, the morning and the afternoon are obligatory. The arvus rishos. So you'll say, so why do women have to daven? It's a mitzvah sasei midra banon shehazman grama, and women don't have to keep mitzvah sasei shehazman grama midra banon. The afapi shehi mitzvah sasei midra soifrim shehazman grama, and women are potter mikom mitzvah sasei shehazman grama even midra soifrim like kiddush savana. Afapi kein chivu oisam betfilas shach resumincha. Listen to this. Women, according to Mishnah Brura, are Shachris and Mincha, like men, Hoyl Utfila He Bakoshas Rachamim. What are you davening for? You're davening Hashem should allow your mind to work, that your blood should flow, your heart should pump, your lungs should work. Men need it, women need it. V'chein Iker, says the Chafetz Chaim, that is the Halacha. Chafetz Chaim is... Unequivocal about it. No room for any leniency according to the Mishnah Bura. An Ashkenazi woman according to Mishnah Bura must have in Shachris and Mincha. Kikain das roiv ha poskim, and that's the, the, how the Shagisariya comes out. Alkain yesh lahazir lenoshim she yispalu yudches. The nachain and also they should also gam menachain gam kain she yikabel aleim omach shemayim. They should also be mekabel omach shemayim, which is they should say shema. And then the Mishnah Bura says they should also say the bracha of Emes V'yatsev after Shema in order to be soimech gula l'tfila. V'kalzel inyan shachar sumincha. This is all shachar sumincha. But Mariv, which is Rashus, even though we've accepted upon ourselves, women have not. So according to Mishnah Bura, if the Chavasan was in the room right now, he would say the following to women. Nashim Tzidkaniyos, you get up in the morning, you say berchas ha-tayro, you say berchas ha-shachar. We'll see about Pesukah de Zimra in a minute, or soon. You should say Shema. You should say MSV Yatsev, you should have in Shachris, and in the middle of the day, I don't know, you could be in, in uh, shopping, you're in the mall, I don't know what they're doing, but in the middle of they're working, they have to take time out every day to Davin Mincha. According <coughs> for Ashkenazim. Svardim now? Svardim Shokhanach passes like the Rambam. According to the Rambam, all you have to do takes 10 seconds. That's a big difference every day between Ashkenazim and Svardim. Uh, you know, a Sfardi woman only has to spend 15 seconds a day davening. Even Midrabon in the Megan of says, 15 seconds, you're good to go. Ashkenazi, you're not going to do it in less than uh, 25 minutes between Shachris and Mincha. That's it. That's all. <laughs> okay, now the question is, yeah, this, this, you know, this we're taking. We're going with this. The Mishabura Paschins, women has to daven shachas and mincha. Now, here's the issue. Are you allowed to eat before davening? So we know, like, soich lal adam, the Ramam learns this in Isidai Raisa, perhaps. You can't eat before davening. You could drink water, but um, the Archa Shulchan says you want to put a little milk in your coffee, a little sugar. That's the Mishabura says you can't do that. The Archa Shulchan is lenient because we're very weak today. Fine. It's a cooler. But, but Rabbi say. A piece of cake before davening. If a person is weak and he can't daven without eating a piece of cake, fine. Medical reason too. Medical reason. If you have medical reason, fine. But uh, um, a healthy person doesn't eat before davening. Is a woman allowed to eat before davening? No. The same way a man can't eat before davening, a woman can't eat before davening. So what do you do? The question is like this. The, the bus picks up the girls to go to, you know, she's above the age of Chinuch. She's 11 years old. She's 10 years old. The bus is going to pick her up and take her to school. She's going to be on the bus for 30 minutes until they get settled down. And Davin, what, she's supposed to eat breakfast at 10.30 in the morning after she woke up at 6.30 in the morning? She, a little kid? Not going to eat before Davin? 
Yeah, but, but the Mishnah Bura says that we pass them like the Ramban. And if we pass them like the Ramban, what? Then women have to daven the whole Shemana Esri of Shachras. So you can't eat before she daven Shachras. So for Sfardim, they have it easy. Why? Uh, and a Sfardi girl wakes up in the morning. She says, Alekai Neshama. She says, Bercha Satayra. So she davened already. <clears throat> so now she can have a honey nut Cheerios, or she can have whatever she can have for, for breakfast, a sandwich, she can have a, a, a pancakes, an omelet, French, whatever she eats in the morning. Well, you can't eat before davening. You didn't daven Shemana Esrei yet. She says, I'm Sfardi. I don't, I don't have to daven Shemana Esrei. All I have to do is say, um, Shavach, Bakasha, and Hoidoya. So, so the, oh, but you're going to daven Shemana Esrei in school? That's because, you know, it's a nice thing to do. Everybody says it's a wonderful thing for women to daven, but she doesn't have to. Well, but you can't eat before Shemana Esrei. I don't have to daven Shemana Esrei, she'll say. I'm a Sfardi. I already said all the kind of Shemana I daven. So a Sephardi girl has no problem. But what does a poor Ashkenazi girl do? What, she's supposed to starve until after they finish singing Matoivu and Yigdal and all the other things they sing? And the Animamins and the Sheish Sechirois and the Pitamak Torahs, whatever. So it says, there's a Sefer, I bought it yesterday, Halicha Yisbas Yisrael. It's Halachos um, for Nashim. And he brings down over here that the technical Halacha is that if a girl wants to eat breakfast in the morning before she goes to school, guess what she has to do? She has to daven. What does she have to daven? The whole davening. He can't eat before davening. Ah, but he brings down over here that Rav Shlomo Zalman Orbach wrote him the following letter, a very interesting letter. Even though if you were going to ask us, can an Ashkenazi girl eat before davening? We would say no. According to Ramban, she has to daven the whole shacharis with Shemana Esrei. She can't eat before she daven Shemana Esrei. We would say no. Says Rav Shlomo Zalman Orbach. Le'inyan, but look in the bottom paragraph. Le'inyan, bonois seminarim. <laughs> Seminary girls. V'chadoima. Haroi tzizlacha babesim koidim alichasim beis ha... ha Lebeis ha... Seifa. Um, they want to eat before they go to school. So the Mishnah Brewer is Machmir by Shachras and Mincha. Says of Shomazalmin, Lemaisa were Makel. Lemaisa were lenient. Why? As long as she says one short Tfila and says Kriyashima. And the only reason she has to say Shema is for Chinuch, because really they're Pater Minadin from Krishma. In other words, says of Shomazalmin, even though. According to the way we've set it up technically, an Ashkenazi girl should not be allowed to eat before davening. Yeah, a Sephardi girl could say one bakasha and she's good to go. But not an, not an Ashkenazi girl. It's brought down in the Sefer Halichos Bas Yisrael Lemaisa. Even though Ashkenazim are machmer that the Noshim should daven Shachar Semincha, but nevertheless we're makel that they're allowed to eat before davening as long as they say Eza bakasha. So the question is, what do you mean that we're noyeg to be makel? But the halacha is not like that. The halacha is that the Mishabura passes like Ramban, that women have to daven Shemana Esrei, so how could they eat before Shemana Esrei? What do you mean we're noyheg to be mekel? So, what kind of minhag? It's not a good minhag then. Well, what's Rav Shlomo Zalman saying? The minhag is to be mekel. I mean the minhag is mekel. No, it's not. If they're davening shachras and mincha, that means they're, they're passing like Ramban. According to Ramban, how could they eat before shachras and mincha? So we have an amazing um, little piece over here, an amazing shtickle over here. From Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, they printed um, the Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky. We know there's a Sefer Emes Liyakov on Chumash. There's also the Emes Liyakov on Shulchan Aruch. And Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky says like this, an amazing thing. That even though Ashkenazim are machmer like Ramban, but when it comes to the Isser of eating before davening, we go like the Rambam, that as long as you say a short tefillah, in other words, he's giving us more of a hezber in the kula of Rav Shlomo Zalman Arbach. Rav Shlomo Zalman just says... For all women, not just the children. Right, no, for all women, for all women, correct. In other words, says uh, Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky, Rav Shlomo Zalman is saying, right, good point, excellent point. Rav Shlomo Zalman perhaps is only being makel for uh, seminary girls or for uh, girls going to school. Maybe they have a long trip, it's a long day, to allow them to eat before davening. But says Rav... Rab, um, Yaakov Kamnetsky a little further. Look, look, look what he writes. Very beautiful. After Kaimalon, Iker Lahalacha Karamban, even though Ashkenazim are passing like the Ramban. 
Dinoshim Chayavas Betfilim Adrabana. Mitam Rachame. Vialeim Lispalo Bechoyam Shachar Sumincha. And therefore women need to daven every day Shachar Sumincha. And says Rabbi Yaakov, in Lita, the women daven Shachar Sumincha. Bechino Agua Noshim Belita. Mikamakam. Legabe Ho Isser Lecha Kod Matfila. However, regarding the Isser of eating before davening, Yesh Makam Lenoshim Lismai Chadas Harambam. Women could say, I hold like the Rambam. So you see, you see a lady, your, your wife's eating breakfast before she damaged from an ashray. So what are you doing? So no, even though we pass like Ramban. But, but regarding the issue of eating before davening, you could be mako like the Svardim, like the Rambam. You could be Yotze your Chiyav by saying a Bakasha. Regarding the prohibition of not eating on the blood, not eating before davening, it's enough to fulfill your chiyav tefillah medai raisa. So, but just bear in mind, what I want to point out is that the machlekes between the Rambam and the Ramban has tremendous halachic implications. Because according to the Rambam, who the Svaradim hold like, technically, all you need to do is say a small bakasha and then you could eat. According to the Ram, and then you're good to go for the day. A woman doesn't have to dominate anything else the rest of the day. But according to the Ramban, it comes out a big chumrah that since women have to daven shachar semincha, technically, according to Ramban, women cannot eat until after they daven shvana esrei. We're just pointing out from Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, from Shom Zaman Orbach, that regarding the Yisra of eating before davening, a woman is entitled to be lenient like the Rambam. And as soon as she says one bakasha, she could eat. And I believe that's the minog, that, that's what women do. That they, you know, in the morning... What? So Rav, Rav Yaakov says... Well, Rosh Hashanah says they should say that at least the uh, Shema also. Rabbi, what does it mean? Now, a quote from the Chumash Al Adam. What is the, the no, relationship? No, the pasuk says Lo Yisoichol Al Adam. Literally, it means don't eat blood. Right. So the Gemara Brachos is Medayik. Why does it say don't eat on the blood? It should say Lo Yisoichol Adam. Don't eat yeah, blood. Right. Al Adam. The Gemara learns to mean. Don't eat before you pray for your own blood. Uh-huh. Okay? Uh-huh. Okay. So, Rabbi Sai, so again, it comes out that the Ramban who learns Tfilo is Midrabanon is a tremendous Chumra. Because the Ramban would say women cannot eat before Shmanes. Now, let's, let's flip it around. I'm going to show you a very interesting twist in this Machlokas Rambam and Ramban. Rabbi Sai, Shabbos morning. You wake up in the morning, before davening, are you allowed to drink water? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to make Kiddush? No. 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 After you daven Musaf, you want to drink water. You allowed to drink water before Kiddush? No. 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 Why? Why are you allowed to drink water before, before davening, and you can't drink water after davening? Because before davening, it's not... <clears throat> You, you, there's no chiv of Kiddush yet. The chiv of Kiddush only comes after the davening. So before davening, you could drink water, you don't have to make Kiddush. After davening, before you drink water, you have to make Kiddush. By the way, the beer halacha, there's an amazing beer halacha people may not be aware of. What if for refuah, you need to eat before davening Shabbos morning? Men of all ladies only. Right? What if you need to eat before davening Shabbos morning for health reasons? Says the Bir Halacha, you want to eat before davening? No problem. You have a, a legitimate reason to eat, a health reason, just make Kiddush. You hear this? Bir Halacha says, you want to eat before davening? No problem. You have to make Kiddush though. On whiskey or wine? <laughs> you can't make Kiddush on whiskey. First of, all, uh, first of all, everybody should know. It's a good thing to bring it up. You go to a Kiddush, there, people make Kiddush on a little schnapps gloisen. So first of all, you need a kais, a disposable thing. You can't make kiddush on. You can't make kiddush on a plastic cup. You need a kais. Number one. Number two, you need a revius. Okay, you need three point three ounces. You have three point three ounces and a one ounce schnapps goes in. No, no. So the big problem. You want to eat out of kiddush. Make sure you have with you a, a real cup. Otherwise, wait till you get home to eat. But chaparayin, uh, or one of these little things, and you make a shahakal on something, it's disposable, it's not a shear, it's not a kiddush. But anyway, that's for a different time. By the way, the, so the question is, from, so you want to drink orange juice, see here's a, you have a chayla, he's, he's drinking orange juice in the morning, well, he has to down his medicine. So now he's going to make kiddush on the orange juice before shacharis? 
seems to be what that's what the Bir Halacha says. Rav Moshe explains that the Bir Halacha only really means that you have to make Kiddush before davening if you're going to have either bread or cake. But that's a big Kiddush. According to Rav Moshe, according to the Bir Halacha, if a person needs to eat uh, some cake before davening because he's not going to have Kayach to daven, he has to make Kiddush before uh, before davening. That's the opinion of the Chavetz Chaim and, and the the uh, and Rav Moshe. I think uh, I believe that the Chasidish Poiskim may say differently. The Chalkas Yoyav, I think he says that um, he saw many Anshe Maisa who if they need to eat before davening don't make Kiddush. I'm just here. I'm telling you. Mishnah Brura, Rav Moshe Feinstein, they say if you're going to have cake before davening, if you have a legitimate reason, you, st- you have to make Kiddush. Okay. But you said before the Kiddush is only here Ah, but if you're going to have Mamish Suda, then you need to make Kiddush. That's, that's what the Bir Halacha says. That's it's, a, suda, it's just taking some pills. No, he, no, 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 if you're eating, no, if you're eating pills, you don't have to make Kiddush on, on, you don't have to make Kiddush on pills. Yeah, but if you're going to eat, you're eating. You have to make a Baruch on water. Correct, right, right. Right. That's the opinion of the Bir Halacha. Ask your own Rav. This is what I'm just telling you with the Bir Halacha and Rav Moshe say. Okay. But on orange juice, Rav Oisai, if you drink orange juice before Shachris, even Rav Moshe would say, you don't have to make Kiddush. But after Shachris, you would have to make Kiddush if you want to drink it. What's the difference between before Shachris and after Shachris? The difference is, you don't have a Chiyuv to make Kiddush until you daven. So before you daven, you don't have a Chiyuv to make Kiddush. So if you can have the orange juice, and you have a, a legitimate reason to drink it, you have a refu dick, a reason to drink it, you don't have to make Kiddush. After Domini, you have to make Kiddush. So you ready for this twist? Do women have to make Kiddush Shabbos morning if they want to drink, if they want to drink oranges? That's, that's the problem with Ashkenazi, yeah? just the opposite. Right? Do, I, do, do a woman... She wants to drink orange juice in the morning, Shabbos morning, before her husband comes home. Does she have to make Kiddush on the orange juice, or does she not? So it comes out over here, Sfardim have a big Chumrah, and Ashkenazim have a big Kula. Why? Because according to Ashkenazim, again, you're not Mechiv to make Kiddush until you daven. So for Sfardim, as soon as they get up in the morning, they say, Berchaz HaTayra, they davened already. So now she wants to drink orange juice, she has to make Kiddush. She davened. The chi of Kiddush came. But for Ashkenazim, the fact she said Berchas HaTorah is not doing her any good. I mean, it's doing her good, but she didn't daven yet. So if she made Berchas HaTorah, she does not have to make Kiddush. She wants to drink the oranges. So it's a, it's a, it turns the whole machlokes on its head. We were saying until now, regarding the Isra of Achila, according to the Rambam, as soon as you daven a little bit, you could eat. According to Rambam, you can't eat until you, you daven the whole Shemon Esrei. So in other words, Ramban was more machmer than the Ramban. Because according to Ramban, you have to daven more. According to Ramban, you have to daven the Hoshman Esri. But it comes out, the fact that the Rambam is lenient and allows for a small amount of tefillah, that means if you have a small amount of tefillah, then the Chi of Kiddush kicks in. So a Sephardi woman, she says, Berchas now she wants to take a, a, a little bite to eat, she has to make Kiddush. Ashkenazi woman, if she said Berchas and she wants to take some orange juice, so she gets to play both ways. She gets to be a real Lamdin. Okay? She gets to say like this. I'm being Mako like the Rambam that I already davened and therefore I, now I could eat. But now you want me to make Kiddush? No. The Rambam says I didn't daven yet. So she could take both ends of the string. She could be lenient and eat a little bit after she davened a little bit but she could be she could be also lenient and say, oh, but I'm a big machmer like the Ramban. I didn't daven yet, and therefore I don't have to make Kiddush until I daven the Hoshman Esrei. Who says this? The Prima Gadim. And the Kafachayim, Kafachayim <coughs> in Archaim Simen Reish Pevav, Sifkat and Lamed, Kafachayim says like this, Could a woman eat in the morning before Kiddush? It depends what her practice is. If her practice is only to daven Berchus or or Elikai Neshama, as soon as she says that, she's mechiv to make Kiddush. But if her practice is to be machmer like the Ramban, then she is not mechuyiv to make Kiddush until after she daven Shman Esra. I'll tell you another leniency from Rav Moshe. Rav Moshe, in the Igor Moshe, in the Archaim, Chilak Dalit, Sim Kofalif, Rav Moshe has a fantastic kula. Now, if you want to rely on it, you'll ask your personal <laughs> Rav. But Rav Moshe says like this, 
You know, uh, in, in, in our shul, we daven 8.45, and then we have Kiddush after davening. Until I get home, it's very late, you know? So, so the, uh, my wife, uh, before I come, she makes Kiddush. She makes Kiddush. Because of the children. Yeah, until, because it's very late. Until I get home, everybody... So, um, that would be, that would be being machmer, like the Ramban. In other words, once she's davened uh, Shacharis, so now uh, she has a chiyav of, of Kiddush. But Rav Moshe has a big kula. You ready for this kula? Rav Moshe says that a woman Shabbos morning is allowed to eat before Kiddush. A woman is allowed to eat before Kiddush. Anything. Bread. She could wash. She could have a salami sandwich on club. <laughs> she doesn't have to hear Kiddush. Mustard and pickles. Why not? You ready for this? This is going to sound like, this halacha is going to sound strange in the year 2014, Le right? Misparam, <laughs> yeah. So why? Because a woman, according to Shulchan Aruch, can't just eat on her own. She's meshubed to eat with her husband. Part of the duties of the ksuba is when the husband eats, the woman sits down next to him. It sounds like it's a novel, a novel concept, right? But that, those are the responsibilities. Therefore, says Ramosha. When is there a chiv to make Kiddush? When there's a chiv suda. A woman does not have a chiv suda until her husband comes home. So, the whole morning, even if she davened already, she could go and eat. What do you mean? Yeah, she has to make Kiddush. She says, I don't have to make Kiddush. I don't have a chiv suda yet. My chiv suda has not begun until my husband comes and sits down at the table. Says Rav Moshe, a woman could eat before Kiddush. Straight! You ever hear such a big chiddush? Mm. A woman is allowed to eat before chiddush. Why? Because, well, let's say you wake up 3 o'clock in the morning, and you want to eat. Do you have to make chiddush? No! Because the chiv suda doesn't start before davening. So just like for a man, the chiv suda doesn't start before davening, for a woman, the chiv suda doesn't start till the husband says, we're eating now. Okay? Now, so Moshe says like this. If the husband has davened, and now the husband says, you know what, I'm not ready to eat yet. So then, she, at that point in time that the husband has come home, if the reason he doesn't want to eat is he's just not ready to eat yet, she would have to make kiddush before, before eating. Why? Because that's his man suda. The fact that the husband is just pushing it off for a technical reason would not make her exempt from the obligation to hear Kiddush. It says a much another thing. Let me just qualify what I said. He says it comes out that if she davened already and the husband didn't daven, she should also be allowed to eat before Kiddush because it's not this man suda yet. Says a Moshe, but no. Once the woman has davened, he says like this: the Avshanim tzilufizeh dim he hispalo lekfar. Let's say she davened, ubala adayin loy hispalo, and the husband did not daven. Nami tu chalecha b'loy kiddush. She should also be allowed to eat meachad loy chalcher v'skiddush al baila because the chiv of kiddush has not devolved on the husband yet. Loy nira lemaisa lasus kain. Says a Moshe, you shouldn't do that. The bedaver hamotzi shu achila da achar atfila to eat after davening. We say loy plug. Only achila koydim atfila, which is not so common, we don't say loy plug, and she could eat without kiddush. In other words, like this. Rev Moshe is saying that a woman could eat before kiddush, yes, if you didn't daven. but if she didn't, only if she didn't daven yet. If she davened, then Chazal say across the board that men, women have to hear kiddush. But a woman who didn't daven yet, then she could rely on the fact that she doesn't have to hear Kiddush if she wants to eat. Why? Because the Chi of Suda, the Chi of Kiddush only comes when there's a Chi of Suda, and a woman is Meshubba to her husband. So it comes out like this. In the morning, Shabbos morning, you have a mother, she has daughters, she just said one bakasha, so now she could eat something. Does she have to make Kiddush? The mother doesn't have to make Kiddush, and the daughters do have to make Kiddush. Why? 
Because the, the wife has a Sheba to the husband to eat with the husband. Children do not have a Sheba to eat with their parents. But what do you mean? But the parents would like the kids to wait. It's not their cheretz if they don't wait. Says Ramesha, that is not enough of an obligation that the children have that would make it that they're exempt from Kiddush. So imagine, the mother is eating without Kiddush. The, mother, the kids are saying, I'm hungry. So the, the mother says, so make Kiddush. I don't have to make Kiddush, but you have to make Kiddush. That's how Ramesha Paskins. Okay, very interesting. What about but, the rest of the week when they're kind of in Kiddush? What? Dabbing in the morning. Women do dab and don't dab, but they eat before dabbing. So, so we're, saying, we're saying like this. A woman cannot eat before davening. That's the strict halach. A woman can't eat. Now, what is davening? So according to the Rambam, that davening is a small thing. So as soon as a woman says a small thing, she's exempt. She, and, and excuse me, once a woman says a small thing, she could eat. The Ramban would say a woman has to daven Shemona Esrei, and therefore a woman cannot eat until after she daven Shemona Esrei. We just pointed out that even though Ashkenazim go like the Ramban... Regarding the Isra of eating before davening, they could be lenient like the Rambam, and as soon as they daven a small thing, from that point on, they could eat. Yeah. So, a lot of men in row yeah. eat separately from their wives. Really? I, I can't speak for them. I, 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 the, the wives eat separately, and the men who come, whatever it is, they, uh-huh. they eat separately. Okay, look, the, if, the, if, the, if the husband, if the, if the husband is Michael the Shibud, you know, that's, the, 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 if the husband doesn't mind, that's up to him. Yeah. According to the Emes Yaakov, though, everybody can eat before, before davening, everybody can eat before Kiddush. Yeah, yeah, it's Hasidic. No, why? Because they, they can rely on the Ram, on the Ram. No, they could eat before davening. They eat before davening. But, but they can't eat before Kiddush. But we before davening, the Kiddush doesn't, this is not chal yet. So in other words, according to the, the Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, they could rely on the Rambam, that as soon as they davened a little bit, they, can, they, they can could eat. eat. Right, without before Kiddush. Before Shemana Esrei. Without Kiddush. No, he's not talking about it. He's talking about uh, every day. He's talking every about day, Tuesday, every Wednesday, day. Thursday. Okay. As soon as they daven a, a, little, a little bit, bit they, can eat. they could eat. Now, regarding Shabbos and Kiddush, it could be Rabbi Yaakov may agree or may not agree with Rabbi Moshe. Rabbi Moshe would say that as long as they didn't daven the Shemon Esrei, then uh, they could rely on the fact that their Chiyav uh, Kiddush has not come yet because their husbands uh, are not home from Shul. Okay. I'm, we're just pointing out that the Machlik is Rambam and Ramban comes out opposite extremes in two cases. Regarding the issue of eating before davening, the Rambam comes out a kula and the Ramban is a chumrah. The Rambam says, you only have to daven a little bit. The Ramban says, you have a lot more to daven before you eat. But regarding not eating before Kiddush, it would come out according to the Rambam, once you daven a little bit, so now you have to make Kiddush. And according to the Ramban, uh, the chi of Kiddush didn't come because he didn't daven yet. Rabbi Isai, do women have to daven suki de zimra? <coughs> Says Rabbi Vadi Yosef, I have a better question. Are women allowed to daven Sukkot the Zimra? Why not? Why not? So now, now Rabbi Vadi says, well, let's ask even an even better question. Does a regular person have to daven Sukkot the Zimra? Is it a chiyuv or is it only a minog? So, the Yismach Moshe and the Shalzat Chibas Heishiv Moshe, number 17, so this is Rabbi Vadi brings down in the Chavadas, in Chelek Gimel, Simon Gimel, uh, the Yismach Moshe, in the Shal Tzachim, Heish of Moshe, Chelek Arachem, Simon Gimel, he brings down from the Gemara in Shabbos, Kufi Yechasim and Bezer, Rabbi Yossi said, I would like to be though, among those who say Psuke de Zimra every day. So apparently, Psuke de Zimra is not an outright Chiv, otherwise what's Rabbi Yossi saying, you know, let my shir be among those who say Psuke de Zimra. Every Jew has to say Psuke de Zimra. Apparently, you see from there, says the Yismach Moshe, that Psuke de Zimra is only a Minog and not a Chiv. However, most Paiskim argue. The consensus of Paiskim is that Psuke de Zimra is a minog that has nispashed b'chol Yisrael. And <clears throat> even though in the times of Rabbi Yossi, perhaps, in Shabbos, it was not yet nispashed, nevertheless, at this point in time, it is a chi of gomer to say Psuke de Zimra. This is how the Rambam Paskins and says Rabbi Vadya, this is the, the riff, the rush, Taisus and Brachas, Taisus and Psachim, Tarachas Chaim, Shibar Le'aleket, and Rabbi Vadya brings out many Paiskim that argue with the Yismach Mash on this Indian, and in fact, for most people, for, for, um, for, it is a Chiyav today to say Psuki de Zimra. Now, the Prichadash wants to say that Baruch Sha'amar was enacted in the times of the Ga'inim. However, the Chidan, the Berke Yosef, 
brings proofs that no, Baruch Sha'amar is much earlier than the times of the Gainim, because the Torah brings down from the Sefer Hechalais, which was composed by Atanu Shon ben Alisha, and it's also mentioned in the Zayar, and the Bach also says that Baruch Sha'amar was Niskan by the Anshas Knesset Agdol, and that's what the Taz and El Yoraba hold. Okay. So therefore, Psuki de Zimra on a Yid is a Chiyov. Baruch Sha'amar, Ashrei Yishtabach, and the rest of Psuki de Zimra is a Chiyov. But now let's get to the question. Do you say Psuke de Zimra after davening? Let's say a person had a skip Psuke de Zimra, was not, did not say Baruch Shomar and Yishtabach. Would they say it after davening? No. In the Chus of the Torah, Noe Goin, and the Siddur of Amram, they say, the Ein Makam Lomar Psuke de Zimra after Shachris. Because it was only Niskan before Tefillah. That's what Moshe Goin Paskins. That's what's Paskins in the Sefer Aruch. In the Machsar Vichy, in the Gois Maimini, Shibala HaReket, the Chivas HaRajba, and the Ramban, and in the Shulchan Aruch. That... Maybe if you didn't say it, you don't have to say it afterwards? In other words, you would, if you skip Sukkot the Zimra, you could say the Mizmairim, but you do not say Baruch Shomer and Yishtabach after Shachris. If that's the case, says Rabbi Vagia, it comes out, Sukkot the Zimra is the Zaman Grama. You can only say it before davening. And davening is the Zaman Grama, so Sukkot the Zimra is the Zaman Grama. Now the Shulchan Aruch paskins that a woman is not allowed to make a bracha on something that's a Zman Grama if she wants to. And therefore Sfardim, says Rabbi Vadya, cannot say Baruch Shomar and Yishtaba. Female Sfardim. Yes. Right? They're not allowed to say a bracha Baruch Shomar and Yishtaba. That's Rabbi Vadya paskins. The Ashkenazim go like the Ramah. That women are allowed to make a bracha on Azman Grama, and therefore women are allowed to say Baruch Shem and Yishtamach. So says the Ravadi, the question is not, are women obligated to say Sukkot the Zimra? The question is, are they allowed to? And the answer is, Sfardim may say the Mizmoyrim, they cannot make the bracha Baruch Shem and Yishtamach, Sfardim Nashim, and Ashkenazim, women um, Ashkenazim, are allowed to say Baruch Shem and Yishtamach. Are they Mechuyiv too? No. And therefore, and therefore, you have a, um, somebody, you have a woman, and she doesn't have time to say the whole davening. Chas v'shalom, she should be davening p'suket de zimra. She's not mechuyiv to say p'suket de zimra. If that's going to mean she might not say shema and shema na esrei, the Ramban learns women are mechuyiv to daven shema na esrei. They're mechuyiv to daven mincha. So a woman thinks uh, uh, she's going to daven Baruch Sha'amar, Hoidu, Vay Baruch David, and she's not going to daven Mincha. Mincha, she has to daven. Psukit de Zimra, she's not Machoyev to daven. It's much more important for a woman to be davening Mincha than to be davening Psukit de Zimra. <coughs> she's not Machoyev in all the, the Matoivu and the Hoidu. A woman, what does a woman daven? According to Sfardim, all she has to say is Shevach, Bakasha, Hoidu. What about Ashkenazi? Berchas HaToyra, Berchas HaShachar, Shema, according to the Mishnah Bura, Emes V'Yatsif, Shema Yine Esrei, V'Zehu. What? She doesn't have to say Berchas Krishna. According to the Mishnah Bura, she should say Emes V'Yatsif and Gal Yisrael. What about Tfilas Musaf? The women have to dive in Musaf. Women love to dive in Musaf. They come to Shul about Chris at Torah time, or for Musaf the, time, for the and they like to dive in Musaf. Come for the Joshua. Do women have to dive in Musaf? No. Not according to Rabbi Kiva Eger. Rabbi Kiva Eger says, L'chayra, nira, dinash, and p'tur, it's Musaf. It would seem that women are potter from Musaf. Why? Because the Tfilas Musaf was bought with, this is number 18, Shalat Shul, Rabbi Kiva Simon Tess. The Tukar Musaf was brought Bought from the Maxus HaShekel. Do women give Maxus HaShekel? No. Says Rabbi Kiva Eger in the name of the Shas Chosen of Salman Rush. Women don't daven Musaf either. They don't have to daven Musaf either. And Rabbi Kiva Eger writes this on his Hagois on Shulchan Aruch, Simon Kofav. Women do not have to daven Musaf. The Neid of Yehuda and the Tzlach and Brachas, Chavav Amen Aleph. The Neid of says another reason why women don't have to daven Musaf. Why do women daven Shachris and Mincha? Because it's Rachamim. Because they're davening Rifainu, they're davening Baruch Haleinu. So even though Shachris on Shabbos is not Rachamim, but light plug. So they daven during the week, they daven on, Sha- on Shachris on Shabbos. But Musuf is not Rachamim. Musuf is a carbon Musuf. It's a mitzvah says Shazan and Grama. Women don't daven Musuf, says the Nazi. They want to, they can, but they're not Mechuyu. Now, not everybody agrees with this. Mishnah brings down. 
Mishnah Brewer brings down uh, in number 22 that the uh, Slach says women are potter, but the Mugging Gibarim says women are chayev. By the way, what's the Mugging Gibarim going to do with what Rabbi Kivager says, but women are not chayev in the Machsas HaShakel? So there's a very interesting shiva from Rabbi Yitzchak Al-Khan on Spectre in the Shas of Shuvah, Rabbi Yitzchak Simen Chaf. He asks, according to Rabbi Kivager, that women are potter from Tzvilas Musaf, because they don't have to give the Machsas HaShakel any koyhanim over here? Yeah, I'm clear. Oh, Koyan. So there's an opinion that Koyhanim don't have to, oh, David, is it Koyan, right? That, that Koyhanim don't have to give the Maxa Sasheka. Oh. So according to Rabbi Kivager, then Koyhanim shouldn't have to dive in Musaf either. Mm. Ah. Right? And Levim, any Levim? Levim also, there's an opinion you don't have to dive, give the Maxa Sasheka. So there, but the answer is that it's not that we see from there, it's not dependent on con- contributing to the Maxa Sasheka, but it's a flat Achiv, and therefore it says the uh, Be'er Yitzchak, Sides, siding with Mugging Barm, that women have to down Musaf. But it comes out, do women have to down Musaf? There's a very big case to be made that women don't have to down Musaf. So for a woman to come to Shul Musaf time and dive in Musaf with the Tzibur is at Sas Yetzirah. She should be down in Shachris. The Ramban says she's Mechayv to down in Shachris. Yeah, but the Mugging Gibarim is Machmer that women should down Musaf. Wonderful! But if you're only davening one Shemayna Esrei, why would you daven Musaf that Rabbi Kivager and the Tzach say you're potter, but the Ramban says you're mechuyv in Shachris? Uh, once Musaf is davened, you can't daven Shachris anymore. Once Musaf is davened. You can't daven Shachris anymore. Once Musaf is davened. <coughs> once Musaf is davened. You mean as a Tashlumen? As a Tashlumen. Fine, so let her dive in Shachris. So even though the shul is davening... Shul. Yeah. yeah, there's no chiv of tulip at Sibar for women. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. I'm... So again, it comes out, Rabbi Isai, a very big chumrah that the Chavetz Chaim is saying, that women, Ashkenazic women, are chayiv to daven Shachris, chayiv to daven Mincha. But the Chavetz Chaim himself, who writes this, let me tell you what the Chafetz Chaim's son writes about the Chafetz Chaim's wife, what she was noyheg lamaisa. <laughs> so we would say, you know, if the Chafetz Chaim writes that women are mechayiv to daven shachris and mincha, probably the Chafetz Chaim's wife, she daven shachris and mincha. Are you ready for this? Fasten your seatbelts. Number? number 23. This comes from the biography of the Chafetz Chaim in the Kol Kisvei Chafetz Chaim, Chela Gimel, page 13. The dogma. His son wrote what's called Dugma Midar Chayavi. He writes the following. Imi zal kemat loy hispalala. My mother barely ever davened. Kozman shaloy yatsanu mitachas yada. When us kids were in the house. Kemat she never davened. So you say, but maybe the Chavetz Chaim was not happy about that. No, my father told her not to daven. But Amroli, she told me, Ki avi that the Chavetz Chaim exempted her. Mishum shehi oisekes begido banea, because she's busy raising the kids. Ah, that has priority. Why? That it would seem like the Chassan of the Chavetz Chaim is writing that it's like a gather of oisek b'mitzvah pater min mitzvah. She's busy raising the children. She's busy in that mitzvah. <laughs> she's exempt from the mitzvah of tefillah. The daughter should see that. The daughter should see the mother davening. Why? No, the daughter should see the mother taking care of the kids. kids. <laughs> the daughter should see the mother not going to show. The daughter should see the mother doing what Hashem wants her to do. More important. And the daughter does not have children yet. Oh, so what should be? The mother should busy with the kids. The daughter should have him. The daughter should have him. Does anybody else pass in this way? I mean, this is an anecdote. This is a story. Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky writes explicitly, that women who are busy with children are exempt from tefillah. He says, period. Women who are busy with children, even though we said Ashkenazim are machmer like Ramban, Tidavin Shech Rosh Mincha, Mikamakam Efsher, Shehein Peturois, it could be their pater Kedin, Meshamish Choyla Shepater Metfila. Wow. Rabbi Yaakov says a little differently than the Chavetz Chaim. The Chavetz Chaim says, Oisik b'mitzah pater minutes. There's a different thing. You're in the hospital taking care of somebody. Chas v'shalom. You're pater from tefillah. You're, yes. you're attending to the needs of, of a yid. Right. So the mother, what's, she's attending to these children. Without the mother, right? A katan. A katan has a status of a chayla. 
So therefore, therefore says Rabbi Yaakov, it's like Mesham Eshchayla Shepat Metvila. Now it doesn't mean they don't have to daven at all. It means they could be Salmech on the Rambam. That all she has to do is Shavach, Bakasha, Tfila. And what mother doesn't get up in the morning and say, Shalaylam, get me through the morning, right? Who doesn't do that? And that, that according to the Rambam, you would say, and even though Ashkenazim, like the Chavaz Chaim says, are Machmer, Shachas, and Mincha, but you're taking care of kids, you're exempt. Yeshlam, listen to the Rambam, the Lomar, Bechas, Shachar, Adgoy, Machas, Adam, Toivim, but she should be Machavin, that with that she's being Yoy to the Chiv of Tfila. Now listen to this. Says Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky. What should they be teaching girls to daven in school? You know, a girl comes home on a, on a Shabbos or a Sunday to daven. Well, she's gonna have, she now all of a sudden she has to daven. Matoivu, Yigdal, Adoin Oilam, right? Karbanois. Why? Because in school she says the whole thing. Is that what should they be training girls to daven the whole thing? Isn't the purpose of training a chinuch so that they know what to do when they get older? And when they get older, they're not going to be davening. They're going to hopefully be, right? So it says Rav Yaakov, it depends. The younger they are, the more they should be davening in school. <laughs> in elementary school, listen to this. In elementary school, In elementary school, they should be davening the whole siddur, obviously according to their level, right? In high school, in seminary, we should not be teaching girls to be davening the whole davening. You're supposed to be preparing them for motherhood. And when they're mothers, they shouldn't be, they're not going to be davening. They'll be taking care of their kids. So it says Rabbi Yaakov, But they said, Gavayim Yeshu HaMespao, Pachas Yoyser, Mimash Yispao, Mikoyim. Imagine this, in ninth grade, the teacher says, Girls, now that you're older, you can be davening less. So why not less? Because we have to be Mechanech you. Because if you're going to train them to daven everything, everything, everything. And by the way, Rabbi said, this is a very big problem, not just for women, for men also. Because men get into the habit, they have to say everything in the Siddur. Wonderful! So make sure you're in Shul an hour and a half before davening. You right. want to say Matoivu, Yigdal, right. and all the other piyutim, fine. Always Bottom always line is, Mishabura says, the definition of Tfilah is to start Shemayna Esri with the Tzibor. And if you're Matoivu and Adoy Noilam and Karbanis is going to make you not start Shemayna the definition of Tfilah with Tzibor is to start Shemayna Esri with the Tzibor. But Yevet, as long as they're still davening Shemayna Esri, but Lechachila, you should start Shemayna Esri with Tzibor. So now, but I have to, I was, since I'm a kid, I'm saying every word in the Siddur, right? Shema Beni, Muzim, Sara, Avicha, Ve'atito, Yishtar, Simeon. I, the, you know the Mishnah Baruch says, you don't say Pesachim before Berchah Satayra. So just because the word is in the Siddur, you have to know the Halacha. You have to know the Halacha. In Israel, you say Karbonos before they begin to say. So, beautiful. You want to wake up at an hour before davening? Gesundt, hey, wonderful. Ma'at Tov Ma'noim. But the bottom line is, the same way Rabbi Yaakov is saying, he says, Ki im yachshavu she'em echuyav, as far as kol seidat filah, a woman who thinks she has to daven everything, you know what's going to happen when she becomes a mother? She's going to say, oh, I can't daven anymore. What do you mean? Fulfill the Ramban. Just daven Shemana Esrei. Right? Even the Chavetz Chaim who told his wife, that she's exempt from tefillah, certainly a woman who's able to make time in the morning to daven from the esrei, it's a wonderful thing to do. But a woman, because they're trained, it could be because they're trained to daven everything, so they think they don't have time to daven. It's not true. It says Rabbi Yaakov, in the high schools, in the seminaries, they should be telling the girls, you know what you should daven? Berchas HaShachar, Berchas HaToyrah, Shema, and Shema Esrei. This way when you become mothers, you'll know what is the Iker and what is the Tafel. And the same thing goes for men. Men also have to know. That the, well, the main objective of coming to shul is to be able to start Shemana Ezra together with the Tzibor. So it's a, important to know what the Yikr is, what the Tafel is, and this is what the MS Yaakov says. As the girls get older, they should be trained to daven less. Therefore, when they grow up, they'll know what they can. So Rabbi Isai, so just one last thing. So Rabbi Chaim is saying that a woman who's taking care of kids is exempt from Tzibor. But when the kids are out of the house, women should be reminded... That a kufar Ashkenazim, they should daven shachris and mincha. They should. That's a halacha. Sfardim are not mechuyev. Ashkenazim, according to the psak of the Mishnah should women who don't have the responsibility of children, then they have a bar Hashem. Now they're able to mekayim the mitzvah, um, according to Ramban, of shachris and mincha. Boys, everyone. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.